Hello. Uh, today we are going to discuss the topic translation. Uh, specifically, it is linked with the chapter transformations, uh, and this is the mostly this is the first subtopic. Okay, G. Now come to the definitions. Uh, when an object is translated, it undergo a straight sliding movement. So uh, it means that if you're having any object. So if it is translated, uh, it's just a change in the position. The object will remain same, uh, and it's only the change in position. It'll go, it can go right, it can go left, it can go upwards, downwards, diagonal, or anywhere. Uh, it's just a change in position. That's it. Uh, see this uh, T. Now the new position of T is here, and this arrow is representing the translation that first the position of t was here now it's just a change in position and the t is here now the second one is r see uh, after the changing in position it's the r is here same is the case with this shape here uh, this is a triangle now it's uh, slided and its new position is b dash now see here so this is basically uh, a translation now <clears throat> come to the second slide well here we will discuss about the numbers which uh, will actually define the change in position and uh, it's like quite obvious in front of us that uh, it's written in this way now in mathematics we term these things as column vector I'll write this thing uh, in mathematics we actually <coughs> write this thing as column vector this is column vectors column vectors uh, is uh, uh, basically they are having one column here and uh, there are two numbers written one at the top this one sorry one at the top and the second at the bottom okay now the top number represent different thing and uh, the bottom number represent different thing well, uh, the top number is actually linked with x-axis, means it's uh, actually representing the m movement on x-axis. So, for, for the movement on x-axis, uh, it's further defined, like the top numbers, the very first thing is for the sign, that what is the sign of top number, whether it's positive or negative, and the second thing is the magnitude what actually is the number so if I see this number here I know that it is positive and the magnitude is 2 so positive means that in x-axis for example this is the grid positive numbers represents that I need to move my point or I need to move my shape or anything else towards the right right in this direction and if the, this number is negative, it means that I need to move my object or I need to move my point or anything towards left now. Got it? So the positive number representing the movement towards right and the negative number represents the movements towards left. And now the magnitude. Magnitude definitely will tell you that how much units we have to move forward or how much units we have to go back. For example, specifically in this case, if I'm having a point here, now I know that my first number, the top number of the column vector is 2, so I, it's positive 2, it means that I have to go towards the right. I have to go towards right, and with how much units? 2 units. So it means that my point will come here. This is one unit and this is the second unit. So my point will come here. And for example, if I took this example, now this example is exactly same with this one apart from the sign. The sign is negative and the magnitude is 2. For example, I'm having a point here. So it means that I have to go two units towards left now. So my, no, my point will come here. So the top number actually represents this thing. Now the bottom number. 
the bottom number here for example uh, if we take this example now again the bottom number is definitely split into two things the one is sine again and the second one is the magnitude well the sign can be positive can be negative so if it is positive it means that I have to move my point that much up according to this magnitude and if the sign is negative I, ha I need to move my point downwards got it so the sign is actually representing the direction and magnitude will give me that how much I need to move so if we conclude this bottom sign is actually representing the movement on y-axis and if my sign of the bottom number is positive I have to go up and if my sign of bottom number is negative I need to go down so this is positive and this is negative all right so for example in this case I'm having the bottom number 3 I'm having point here and my point is P now so specifically for this the bottom number I need to go three units and what is the sign definitely positive so I need to go three units up means it's one two and three so my point will come here got it now if I see this example I know that this is negative three so negative three means that for example my point is here my point is here I need to move three units upwards or downwards definitely it's with negative so I have to go downwards three units so my point will come sorry here because this is one unit this is the second unit and this is the third unit so if my point is Q here now my point will come in this box so clear well this slide tells us the movement of the points or the shape according to the column vector the upper part of the column vector represent the, uh, the movement on x-axis and the bottom part at uh, the bottom number represents the position on y-axis all right now come to this third slide and let's solve some questions here now we are having a question that translate point a by vector 2 3 and label it as b so <clears throat> I need to translate point A. The point A is here according to the vector 2 and 3 and we have to label it as B. So I know that the, the top number represents the um, um, movement on x-axis and the bottom number represents the movement on y-axis. Alright, so here this is my point A. So I need to move two units towards the right because the sign is positive so two units towards right so it's one and two so my point will come here and at the same time I need to go three units up so I translated point A two units right now I have to take this point three units up also so it's one two and three so my point will come here now I need to label this point as B Got it. This is my point A. I need to translate it by vector 2 and 3. So I translate it in parts. I know that the top number represents the position at uh, the movement on x-axis. So I translate it first the point A according to the top number. The point come here. Now at the same time, I need to move this point 3 units according to the y-axis. So definitely I need to move 3 units upwards. So at the very ending point of my point is here so this is actually the translation of point a on point b according to this vector i hope it's clear now translate point c by vector negative 4 and negative 1 and label it as d so definitely i need to tr start with the top number it's negative 4 negative 4 means that you have to move four units towards left so first I'll raise this thing uh, so that we can easily shift our point so this is my point C and I need to translate it by negative 4 and negative 4 is 
definitely on x-axis and I have to move towards left so it's one two three and four so I got negative four here a negative one now at the same time a point will come here after this X movement now negative one will come down here so at the very end I got the point here on this grid and I need to label it as D so this is my point D after translation by this vector got it now the last one is uh, translate point A by vector 3 negative 3 so 3 negative 3 means uh, this is my point E means first I need to start with the x-axis so I need to go three units towards right it's one two and three my point come here now I need to move three units downwards now so I need to move this point downwards it's one two and three so my point will come here and I need to represent this by F so this is how we need to translate our points uh, according to the given column vector. Now, sorry, go to the next slide. Now, in this slide, we are having a proper shapes and we need to translate it according to uh, the given column vector. Uh, okay. Now, the part A is translate shape A by vector 6, negative 2 and label it as B. So here, we're not having the points, we are having a whole shape. So uh, <clears throat> to actually translate the whole shapes, the very first thing you have to label the points, the corner points or the vertex. So here we are having four corner points. Now I will, I'm going to change the color so that we may have some difference. Okay, now I need to translate this shape A by this vector and I need to label it by uh, as 3. So, uh, <clears throat> I have to go points by points. So, my point number 1 is here. I'm going to translate this point according to this vector in 6, negative 2. Means 6 towards right and 2 downwards. So, my right is here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So point will come here and two down. It's one, two. So this point will come here. Now I need to go for the second point. Six right and two down. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. And two down, it's one, two. The point will come here. Same as the case with this point. So it's one, two, three, four five six six right and two down it's one two so my point will come here and the last one is here it's one two three four five six and two down it's one and two so my point will come here now I just need to join all of these points so this will be my new shape and I am labeling is labeling it as B after the translation by 6 and negative 2 got it I'm going to solve the second part uh, for the second part I need to actually translate the shape a I need to uh, translate the same shape a by the vector negative 4 m1 negative 4 m1 means that I have to translate each and every point four units left and one up so uh, here we are having one, two, three, and four. Four units left, representing by cross and one up. One up means here. So my point will come here. Same as the case with this point, it's one, two, three, four, and one up. Same as the case with this point, one, two, three, four, and one up. This point, one, two, three, four, and one up. Got it? Now I just need to join the points. And I need to label it as shape C. So this is how we need to actually translate over shapes according to the given vector. So there's not a big difference. Uh, you need to actually label the corner points and you have to move the corner points according to the given vector. Okay, now come to the 
sorry come to the next slide now in the exams uh, you're having the questions like uh, we have to describe the translations and uh, uh, the shapes are in front of you and he asks you to describe that uh, how the transformation is done by a specific shape to a specific shape uh, so the example is in front of you uh, we are having the part A it's it is stating that you have to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. It means that I need to describe the whole transformation which actually transform triangle A onto triangle B. So most of the time uh, this question comes with the two marks. The first mark is for the transformation name that in actual what what is the transformation uh, whether it's a reflection it's a rotation it's a translation or it's an enlargement and the second point is if it is a translation uh, we need to actually write the column vector also so in this case if I see my figure this is tr triangle A and this is triangle B so it's quite obvious that it's just a change in position so I need to write first that it's a translation it's a translation I got the first mark now for the second mark I need to find the column vector by which it is translated now to find the column vector it's like very simple you need to take two corresponding points of the of the two figures definitely A is translated to B so I need to take point here now I need to take the corresponding point of the other tr triangle other figure so definitely the corresponding point will be this one be very careful by taking the points so I'm just finding out the column vector I'm finding the column vector for that I need to take the corresponding points on both shapes so if I took this point I know that the corresponding is this one now I need to see how much this point is translated to this position so I know that there is no across movement there is no left or right movement it's only the downwards movement here so if there is no across movement from this point to this point so it means that the top number is zero because there is no left right movement I'm comparing these two points now for the bottom number I know that it's some uh, movement it's actually defined the movement on y-axis so I need to check that how much it is moved so definitely it's going downwards this point is going downwards so it's how much downwards it's one two three four five and six got it so it's six units downwards so six is the magnitude and definitely if it's going downwards it must be with the negative so for the second point for the second marks it's like I need to write the column vector so the first mark is for the transformation name and definitely it's a translation and you need to write this vector also that it, it is translated according to this vector that's it now we're going to the point uh, part B now that he's saying that I describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle B onto triangle C now here again if it come in the exam it will be of two marks the first is for the name of the transformation and definitely it's a translation because it's only the change in position see triangle B and C it's only the change in position now for the second one what I need to do I need to find out the column vector for that I need two corresponding points on these two triangles so for example now I'm taking this point I'm taking this point of B and definitely the corresponding point on this shape is this one now I need to find it out how much this point is translated till this point so for that I need to first check the across movement on x-axis definitely this is my column vector so the 
top number will represent the movement on x-axis so this is the movement on x-axis it's one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so in actual this point is translated 10 units towards left till this point so I need to write 10 units with the negative now the second one is how much is translated in y-axis so definitely it's going up it's one two and three got it it's, it go three units up so it means that I need to write three with positive so this is all with the transformation uh, uh, most of the time the question come directly that you need to translate the shape or point according to the column vector or sometimes it will come in the reverse format that you are having two figures and uh, by uh, you have to describe the transformation uh, and for that you need uh, the name of the transformation and the column vector so this is all for today thank you so much